should be like you, Mel. Two out of three falls. Jay Whitehall and Rockhaw. Deuce Robinson, because part of Bullet Club Gold, teamed up to take on FTR a week after their successful victory over them after the elimination match and they declared that they would challenge FTR for the gold this week on that on collision and would be subjected to two out of three falls treatment with a 60 minute time limit. Ooh yeah yeah. And I knew uh, like, you know, I had put money on this. If I had put money on this, I would have won when I would say this match will open the show and it will be given a near hour long treatment between 55 minutes to 60 minutes. And if it goes over 60 minutes, it will get a, it will get a over overkill time. Overtime. That didn't happen, but uh, I would have won the bet. But um, yeah, Collision this week was celebrating the legacy of Owen Hart. And me subsequently losing a contest that my buddy from ATW you view King made where I predicted where I said Ricky Stark would win and Blue Sky would win. However, if Blue Sky had made it through further, I would have been happy. But sadly she did not because Ruby Soho had to win. Well, not Ruby Soho, Will and Nightingale. But Ruby Soho had to defeat Sky Blue and ruin my chances. But, uh, yeah, but when this was announced, I was like, well, I'm not watching. I don't have any interest in the Owen after Sky Blue's removal. Like, I had a feeling Ricky Stark was going to win, uh, which I was proven right about. And I did watch the matches. It's fine. It was fine. But this was the match I was looking forward to the most on Collision. So much so that I took a nap just so I don't fall asleep in the middle of the show like I did last week because I was just so out of it that day. They had to catch the replay. So, yeah. Juice Robinson, Rock Hall, and the Switchblade, Jay Whitehall, took on FTR for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Two out of three falls, 60 minute time limit. Oh, how I kind of wish Jim Ross was here for this because he at least would say it. it because he would say, Mark Gallup, this is a slob knocker. These guys are slugging out like the 730, like a insert reference bar fight fest that was famous for a time and then everyone forgot about it until he brings like it up. Uh, oh, God. This match was, was something special. Like, they were, they slugged it out for 58 minutes. Yes, 58 minutes. And they re and they told people there would be five minutes left on this, so the countdown was on, and they and the anxiety and tension increased thanks to that, because now Jay White was like, oh god, I only have like like two minutes left, five minutes left to get this victory, and, and here's the thing, Here, here's the thing, here's my hot take about this. I wanted Bullet Club Gold to win. Yes, I know I committed sacrilege by saying I am not that I wasn't supporting FTR to win even though we know even though everyone knew what they were going to do in this match but like even though I'm wearing this CM Punk shirt best in the world and this I got this when uh, Hangman Page was having that uh, beef with him over the workers rights stuff and whatnot so probably bad time to buy that shirt and wear on that dynamite where he was cutting from promo about Punk when Punk was there on that show in DC no way Baltimore but yeah FTR, and, and I, here's the thing, I, and this is the thing that made me earn Jay White and Juice Robinson's respect during this match was the fact the Gun Club didn't get involved, Sobo Joe didn't get involved, Punk didn't get involved for FTR and whatnot, and, all, and, and adding all these crazy plot elements since, since Punk and FTR are yeah, seemingly finding like half of the locker room. I'm pretty sure that's a metaphor or something, but uh symbolism yada 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 but yeah i was commending them that they didn't go into those trappings and instead decided we're gonna go out there we're gonna freaking kill it and probably do some brett and owen hart references okay that's actually guaranteed considering we're honoring owen hart 
Oh, and David Benoit, the son of you know who, is also in attendance. So, yeah, that was cool that they gave him some exposure, especially since the other place probably will never acknowledge his existence because the sins of the father and all that bullshit. And the fact that he eerily looks like him, even though younger, and doesn't have the muscular physique that his dad had, though probably for the best considering what happened to him and the family, and that sucked. Yeah. But, uh, speaking of, uh, wrestling, FTR and, and the Bullet Club Gold team, they were, they tore it down. Like, I, I, like, I call, like, I should have bet on this match just for the fact that they were going to have this be the opening match and make it a long match. And... <laughs> There was a moment I actually felt scared that Dax Hardwood and Jay White were actually legit injured. I, I'm like, it could come out, and they just were like, okay, look, I know we're injured, I know we're busted, I know we busted our ribs, but damn it, we're finishing this match because everyone in AEW, including Cody Rhodes and Kay Omega, worked, worked continuously with Paul injured. Adam Cole did it. Well, I say we do it too, damn it. And, I, I, like I said, I honestly will say this right now. I wanted Jay White and Juice Robinson to win the, the gold. Like, that was how great, great they were in this match. Like, I knew they were great talents, but, man, the tag team match of this was just great. And I would have been all right with FTR losing the gold. Like, some people have been arguing that the FTR, FTR is not the same as it once was. Like, last year when they had three belts and they should have been given the belts. The AW tag team belts as their fourth collection. But uh, then all these plans kept happening, people kept getting injured, and uh, all hell was breaking loose, essentially, and for AEW at the time, so naturally they, they kept changing the plan and had to delay, but you know, the other promotions exist, so they can't really do work on the, on, on their time with the other promotions, like, look, we gave FTR these belts, uh, we kind of want them back soon, so, yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Seeing this contest, it was like, oh god, oh god. The, the, this is the thing that makes me keep saying, been advocating for a G1 style tag team tournament because that is how great these tag teams, this the AEW tag team division is. They're on lockdown. All they need left is the New Day and the Usos, and the New Day are more than likely going to go to AEW one day, just so they can do their trios match with, the, with Kenny Omega and the Elite. Certainly not talking about Golden Elite, because that would be asking way too much on that front. But, uh... Yeah! Uh... I just this is the six this near 60 minute match is a is possibly their best match for collision yet we're only five episodes in it's that damn good and i don't know how they're gonna stop how they're gonna top this i mean they're they're hinting they might continue feuding and and i'll certainly be all for it but after this they should probably be given a break from each other to move on to other stuff but considering that they keep eluding Jay White might be punk soon, I feel like there's going to be some uh, continuation from this mostly in trio st status. We'll see, we'll see, but um, be like you, Mel. this, oh god, the technical prowess given on display, the, the athleticism we saw, the, the energy that you were giving off and the crowd clapping and cheering them, cheering both teams even when you knew one was group of faces and the other were a group of heels the fact that the, that jay white and juice robinson went out on their on a high note and instead of going down with the cheating path where they're like okay we're probably gonna lose this match but we're gonna go in and blaze of glory damn it and better than johnny silverhand ran. that took a whole game and broke it but to hear to see all this happen, to witness this all happen, I I, I wish I was there. I, I honestly do. To see this this quality we got, oh god, this, this is one of the reasons why I'm so why I'm having mixed thoughts about the chance of AEW having their 12 pay per view system 
instead of keeping it to the current system because you could get away with more with this. Giving away this kind of match on free television. If they gave this away on pay-per-view, I would totally get it. And because this is a money-making match and you definitely should put this on pay-per-view. But since you don't have a pay-per-view every single goddamn month and you spread out more for it, you have the op opening to give away these kind of big matches on free content television. And plus content is king, baby. Content is king. Especially in the streaming wars, regardless of what other promo other companies are saying, and the Hollywood strike is going on with that. I mean, like, come on, just, just pay the writers and actors, damn it. Just pay them, just give them the respect they deserve instead of trying to starve them out by saying it's cruel and necessary evil. It's just necessary. But, uh, yeah, this. This is going to be remembered for a time, I feel like. This is going to be a match that's going to be remembered for a little bit. It's going to be remembered for a time. Until we probably will get Kenny Omega and Cody Bushi's Golden Lovers reunion. And they take on... I, w I don't want to say the Young Bucks. Maybe the FTR. Like, that would be a hell of a match. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. That would be freaking awesome. But, yeah... To Jay White and Juice Robinson, this was their big uh, non-New Japan Hello World moment. And for FTR to them, it, it was more than likely like, damn, we killed it out there. We did great. We made money. We, we, we made you guys. It's a great damn match. But for us, it's just sad in that. Like, I, I appreciate that's the vibe. Like, they, they're proud of it, bro, doubt. But that's the vibe I get. Like FTR just looks like, like, you like know, just not a Saturday for us. We're putting on bangers after bangers after bangers after banger, banger after banger, banger after banger, and whatnot. So take your props on that front. Give them all the flowers they deserve for this match. This was that good, and and by God, I'll be all for it if we see these two collide down the road again uh just not so soon but jy and jj said i honestly for a moment did think they were going to shake the hands of ftr uh, like even the crowd was like shake their hands shake their hands shake their hands shake their hands but they don't they instead spit in their hand and walk out looking like they won something out of this i'm like you won probably an awesome tag team match of the month so we'll see if years but the year is still fresh the year is not only at the halfway mark damn this year has gone by fast and depressing and existentialism and wondering if this is the end of the world but that's a different subject altogether i'm not going to go into that because we're already enough depressed but yeah <laughs> I I'm curious as to know what's next for FTR and Bullet Club Gold. Are they going to go their separate ways? Is Punk going to deal with everybody involved? No idea. Especially after what happened with Ricky Starks and him. Uh, let's just say Ricky Starks disrespected Jushin Thunder Liger because of course he did. I don't know why he did. But uh, and if there was ever a moment I felt like there, there was going to be building to a match like that, then that would have been it. But uh, yeah. Jay White! Oh! The switchblade to him, it was probably another another day in the, in the office, like I'm putting out that banger, and then I'm putting on the Instant Classic. Juice Robinson. Oh, God. For Juice, I'm like, damn, man. I recall this, it's actually been over 10 years ago when you were just this environmental wrestler who got his ass kicked every week, CJ Perry, as now look at you, you're, 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 you're putting on bangers, making yourself a star. I'm still confused, is he all elite officially or is he just on an incursion? Like I've been trying to get, get the word on that. But uh, yeah. If so, then this is probably the biggest investment they gave to a non-AEW non officially officiated talent, because that's saying a lot. Uh, but the bangers continue, everybody. Tag Team Wrestling, oh god, this, this is the 8-8, eight, eight. okay, if Impact Wrestling has the women's division on lockdown, the knockouts division on lockdown, 
all like let's be real when we think of women's wrestling we think of impact wrestling when they're at their best when i think of tag team wrestling oh okay let's be real there's a lot of great tag team divisions this the aw has it on lockdown wwe has the singles division for roman reigns essentially on lockdown and maybe Seth Rollins, but I don't know about that. Even then, I'm starting to think Seth Rollins is starting to hate being in WWE. The way he keeps coming off in interviews. It's just like one minute he's pro WWE and yes, I love everything they do. I love the bullshit. I eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And now he's just suddenly being all anti, anti like being more, uh, I no longer give a fuck. But yeah, back to this. Two out of three fall, instant classic matchup here. Uh, there were some people who had legit criticisms, like they felt like if they shaved it off the if they shaved off 20 minutes, it would have been a match of the year co co content candidate for tag team wrestling. And how they felt like they were stretching things out. I definitely do think I, I kept thinking like maybe that in that whole scare where we thought they were legit injured. I thought that was a little stretched out. Like I was like I don't know if this is legit or legitimately happening, or is it just a story to sell more, but like, after what happened, it looked like it was the latter, but I would have I preferred not having that scare. Especially when the match was super hot. Uh, uh, and, and of course, Dax had to end the match with a sharpshooter owing to Owen and Bret Hart. And whatnot. Like, Okay, I'm trying to wonder, um, are, are they ever, and have they also homage to Davy Boy Smith and the British Bull, the British Bulldog and, and all this stuff, and I was like, okay, I know we have Martha Hart doing her thing with AEW and uh, and giving them the, the clairvoyance permission to honor her husband, her late husband, by God, that was awesome, by God, that's an awesome, beautiful thing to see, but, um... Can we just have a whole heart family segment at this point? Like I, I like that was my initial thought that they were eventually going to have a moment where they were gonna have Martha and Brett finally reconcile their differences after all those years. Like that was like like that's what I thought was gonna happen last for the last Owen Cup. That was the vibe I got. I should be like you, Mel. And they would lead to this big heart family reunion and a unification of sorts. FTR and Punk and so many people who respect and love Owen would come out and celebrate. Even the other two, even the other guys who have beef, who, who who can't legally talk to Punk would be like, okay, can we go out there for this so we don't get lawyers issues? But yeah, that, that's a different subject altogether, but that never happened. Um, it would have been heartwarming though. But Bullet Club Gold, I, I and then I remember. And then I was told that David Finley kicked Jay White, and they and Jay White just had this group formed, and he was like, "So is it officially part of Bullet Club under the banner of the main Bullet Club, or is it?" And like I said, this is this going to turn into Bullet Club Black and White versus Bullet Club Black and Gold? I'm like, I'll be all for it. I'm like, it could be. It doesn't. It could be worse. But come on, we, I kind of want to see some story progress on that front. But that's all I have for today, everybody. It's good to be back after nearly over over nearly two weeks. I got to get back on my new reality pop culture news and reviews talk podcast. And I even have some plans for some things in down the road. I'm hoping to cover more stuff. I'll see y'all again next time. This is your host, Eric Brown of NRE, Neo Reality Entertainment, NRE The WrestleVerse, Neo Reality Collective, Pop Up Movies and Reviews Talk, uh, but most importantly, NRE The WrestleVerse. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out the content in the description below. Stay tuned for more. I'll see y'all again next time. Peace and good care. And wrestling lives on, baby. And it's all freaking elite.